Hello, my name is Dr. Don Phillip and the purpose of this short screen video is to take you through the concept of automated assessment as it appears in the Pepper online learning environment and in the Knowledge Forum online learning environment. Moving to slide one, you can see that the basic idea here is very simple. Students are increasingly moving online for their work. You can see this uh, from the data given here in 2008 there were upwards of a million students, high school students, in the U.S. enrolled online. And we're now at 2012, and there will be more students than that, although I don't have any better data than that right now. Now, as the students increasingly work online with more and more sophisticated environments, all their interactions with those environments can be tracked. And these can provide us with valuable data that can be used for assessment. Pepper is quite advanced in that it has a built-in suite of these online assessment tools, as do one or two other online environments in the world. Now, if you look at the first bullet point here, saying that student-centered learning should obviate the need for examinations, and that alternate comparisons will, when necessary, emerge, well, I don't quite agree with this statement as phrased. What we've learned from the past is that once systems are established, they don't go away very quickly, if at all. So I would modify this to say it won't obviate the need for examinations, but will, will change the importance of them. It will diminish the importance of examinations. And online means of assessment will increasingly become more important because they are real-time, just-in-time assessments available to both the teachers and the students whenever they want them. Below that is an example from the business world in which online assessment was used in an assembly line. Now, I'm including this just to show you that it is already happening elsewhere. I do not wish to imply that education should be like an assembly line. That, in fact, is what our current educational system was based on. We're trying to get away from it. I just wanted to show you a real-world example of this being done in another setting. So looking at the next slide, you can see the first of the assessment tools that we're discussing involves the numbers of notes read, and you can see that it presents this as a bar graph. I've eliminated the student names from this so that uh, it maintains confidentiality, and in fact, uh, this is a different class from a different term, so nobody here uh, who's listening to this uh, has their data represented here in any way. And you can see that some people have not read any notes at all, and some people have read a great many. Now this is important for knowledge building because knowledge building proceeds on the basis of students putting their ideas in a public space and allowing others to comment on them and allowing them to comment further on the ideas of students. And in this process of continuous elaboration, new knowledge is built. So you can see that this graph provides valuable information to the instructor about who is and who is not participating in the kinds of behaviors that would actually lead to knowledge building. The next tool looks at students' work in terms of the number of times that they have actually logged into Pepper to work. And you can see, again, it's presented as a bar graph, and again, the names have been removed. And again, the teachers provided with valuable information about whether students are actually participating or not. Again, it's up to the teacher to decide where, what levels are appropriate, but the teacher needs information in order to do that. The next tool involves the numbers of notes written. Again, these are notes in which ideas are presented to the class, and we need those for knowledge building to proceed. So again, you can see some students are doing nothing. Some students are participating more. So again, the teacher can decide what they need to do about this. The weekly activity looks at the length of time you're online and shows the days when you are online. Again, this lets the teacher know if people are trying to do all their work on a single day or whether they're working more steadily throughout the week. Ideally, students would work steadily throughout the week, but ideal situations rarely occur, and we know that there are exams and other things that may get in the way of your working on certain days. Nonetheless, it's better to work steadily when possible and to try and do all your work at the last minute. The impact analysis shows a number of different things. 
that reflect the impact a student is having on the knowledge building class. So the number of notes written is presented here, but also the number of times they've liked another student's note. Now this is the similar to the uh, like function on Facebook. As well, the number of likes received is looked at, and there's a ratio showing likes to given to likes received. And then it looks at replies received. Of course, if students build on your notes, it probably means that you've said something that they find interesting, useful, or they disagree with. In any event, they've, it's provoked a response, and that's one of the things necessary for knowledge building. And finally, there is the reply ratio, which measures the number of new notes posted to, uh, to the number of replies. Actually, the number of replies divided by the number of new notes posted. The last of the individual tools we're going to look at is the summary tool. And this looks at the total time spent online, the total number of notes written, the total number of replies, the total number of words written, and the total number of words read. This again is valuable information for the instructor and it lets them know who's participating and who isn't and to what level. 